we just launched a set of UI components built on top of Shad CN that makes it easier than it's ever been before to connect your Superbase project to your React-based application. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna use MPX to create a new Next application, but you can create any React-based application you'd like. So using Remix or React Router or Tanstack Start or even React directly, if people still do that, I'm gonna create a Next.js application and I'm going to use the latest version of this package. I'm gonna give it the super creative name of UI library and I'm just going to accept all of the defaults. And once that's finished, we want to change into our new directory and open it up in VS Code. And we can see we have the default Next.js template, which we can view in the browser by running npm run dev and opening up localhost over port 3000. And we see this beautiful landing page of the default Next.js project. Now the Superbase UI library is built on top of Shad CN. If you've never used Shad CN, it's a collection of beautifully styled UI components like this calendar, for example, which have really nice UX and also accessibility built in, which made it the perfect option to build the Superbase UI library on top of. So like Shad CN, we have these beautifully styled reusable components with great UX and accessibility, and we just need to run the installation command to get them into our project. But first we need to install Shad CN. So let's go to the quick start section and we're building out a Next.js app. This takes us to the Shad CN documentation. We're gonna use npm so we can copy this command and head back over to the terminal. I'm just gonna leave our dev server running in the background and create a new process where I can run that init command. This is asking which color we'd like to use as the base. I'm gonna say neutral. And then because the latest version of Next.js uses React 19, there are some packages with a peer dependency issue. So we're just going to use the dash dash force to tell it to just install it anyway. So if we want to add one of those Shad CN components to our project, so let's say this button, we can copy the install command, head back over to our Next.js application, paste that into the terminal, tell it to use dash dash force, and then copy across this block of code. Well, actually we don't need all of this other stuff. We just need our button. So back over in our Next.js project, we can get rid of everything except this outer div and main tag, just so we have a little bit of styling. And now we can paste in our button and we've got some red squigglies because we also need to import that button from at slash component slash UI slash button. We can also get rid of this unused import at the top. And now if we head back over to the browser, we see this blinding light mode. So let's fix that first. If we open up our layout.tsx file, and then scroll down to where we are rendering our body tag, we can add a class for dark to enable dark mode. And now if we head back over to the browser, we don't get blinded with this big flash of white light. We just have this beautiful and accessible Shad CN button rendered on the page. So can we add a login form that's connected to Superbase just as easily? Almost, let's have a look. So if we head back over to the docs page for the Superbase UI library, we can see a collection of components or blocks that we can install into our application, which reminds me of one very important, very cool thing about Shad CN components, and that's that the code lives within your code base. So under components slash UI, we have this button which has all of the code, all the variants, everything that you can do with this button, which is really cool because it means if you want to make a change, you can just change it. The code doesn't live abstracted away in some library it's right there in your project. And we've followed exactly the same principle for these Superbase UI components. By default, we give you authentication with email and password, but you may want to add social logins with GitHub or Google, or maybe sign in with crypto. Anything you want to customize for your specific application, you can do because the code lives within your code base. So let's see how easy it is to install in our application. We see a very similar installation command. So let's copy this one and go back over to our Next.js project and paste it in. We're gonna use that dash dash force flag again. And we'll see it's installed a whole bunch of stuff. And if we go back over to the docs, we can see it's created all of these auth pages for us. And so once we've installed it, all we need to do is create an EMV file and point it at our Superbase project. Now I have a few Superbase projects, but you might not have one. So let's head over to 
database.new where you'll be prompted to create a new Superbase account if you don't have one yet. I'm gonna create this project under my default organization. My project name is gonna be SuperUI. I'm going to click here to generate a password and then choose a region that is close to me. Really you want this to be as close to your users as possible, but in this case, I'm the only user. So I'm going to select Oceana Sydney and then create my new Superbase project. Now this will take a little while to spin up, but to get the keys we need for our Next.js project, we can click this connect button and then head over to app frameworks and click to copy these values, which are specific to the project you just created. And then we want to create in the rootmost directory of our application, a .env.local file, and then paste in our Superbase URL and our Superbase Anon key. Now we can close that one and head back over to our application running in the browser. And it looks like we've been automatically redirected to slash auth slash login. So again, if we go back to our homepage, we're automatically redirected to sign in. So since we don't have an account to log in yet, we can click sign up and then enter our email. So in my case, that's john at superbase.com and then my super secure password and repeat my super secure password and sign up. We get redirected to this page saying thank you for signing up and go and check your email to confirm your account. So you should receive an email that looks something like this. We're going to confirm our email account and now we can log in with those same credentials. So john at superbase.com and my super secure password and we get this hello john message because we have now been redirected to our protected page. So the page that only authenticated users are able to see. And again, this lives within our code base. So if we have a look at our protected page, we can see it creates a Superbase client and then gets the Superbase user. And if we have an error or we don't have a user, then we're redirecting to that login page. Otherwise, if the user is authenticated, then we render that welcome message. But this can be customized in any way we want. So if we wanted to render a pre-tag and then use use json.stringify to render out this entire data object. So everything that we have about our user and we'll just add null and two to pretty print this one on the page. Now, if we go back to the browser, we see this has rendered in not a great way. And so we can turn our flex box here into a flex column and then we see a whole bunch of information about our user. So we can see they're authenticated. They use the email john at superbase.com. So basically everything that we get in this data object when we get the user from Superbase. So we now have a pretty robust authentication flow all connected to Superbase with forgot password, email confirmation, all of the things you might want to implement on your own, but you don't need to implement them on your own. So what else do we get with this UI library? Well, something else that can be quite tricky to implement a nice user experience around is file uploads, but we make it just as easy with this drop zone component. So let's go ahead and install that in our Next.js project. And again, we're gonna use the dash dash force flag. It's installed a bunch of stuff for us. And now if we create a new page for our upload form and create our page.tsx file, we can export a default function for our upload page, which is going to return our component. So how do we actually render our component? If we go back to the docs, we can see all of this stuff has been created for us. And then if we want to use it, we just need to render this drop zone component. So we can actually copy this entire code block, head back over to our Next.js project and create a new file for our upload-form.tsx. And then we can paste in that code from the docs and now have this file upload demo component, which we can render from our upload page. And we can import that one from doc slash upload form. And now if we save this one and back over in the browser, head over to slash upload, we can see our upload component, which would look nicer if it was somewhere in the center of the page. So let's go back over to our page component and just copy these nicely styled div and main elements and wrap them around our file upload demo component. And now if we go back over to the browser, we can see this beautiful drop zone component, which we can drag and drop files onto and click to upload. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because we haven't actually created a bucket in Superbase. So let's do that now. Back over in the Superbase dashboard, we can head over to storage and then create a new bucket. We'll call this one images and click 
save, and we now have an images bucket which can be used by our application. So back over in our application, if we have a look at our file upload demo component, it specifies a bucket name of test, so we can change this one to images, and then we can specify a path like test, or maybe we could make this something like profiles, where we're going to let users upload a profile picture, for example. We can also specify the types of files that can be uploaded, how many files and the maximum size. So let's save this one and try to upload an image. And we see failed to upload, new row violates row level security policy. So we've created a bucket in Superbase, but by default, no one can read or write files. So we need to tell Superbase that this is okay. So under configuration, we have policies and we want to create a new policy for our images bucket. Let's create one from a template. And really we only want authenticated users to be able to upload or view images in this bucket. So let's say use this template and then we want to enable both the select and insert operation. And again, we only want this to be accessible by authenticated users. So this is the policy that has been written for us. Let's Let's click review and this is the SQL that's going to be run against our Postgres instance. So let's say save policy to run that SQL. And we now have a select and an insert policy for our images bucket, but we're not quite finished. If we try to upload this same file, we're going to get the same error. And this is because we've enabled read and write access on the bucket itself, but Superbase also writes some metadata to tables in our database. And so we also need to create a policy for storage.objects. So let's create a new policy. We can just do this one from scratch. We want to enable read access for authenticated users. This one is going to allow the select action. Again, we only want this to run for authenticated users and the expression is going to be true. Let's click review to see the SQL that's going to be run and then save policy to run that SQL and then create another policy from scratch saying that authenticated users can write files which will allow the insert operation for authenticated users with the expression true. And again, review and save. And now if we head back to our application and try to upload that same file, we see successfully uploaded one file. And if we go back to our Superbase dashboard and look at our images bucket, and we can see this profile.png file that we've successfully uploaded to Superbase storage and really easily thanks to the Superbase UI library. So we've made it incredibly simple to implement authentication, file storage, and real-time subscriptions. But what do you wanna see next? Let us know in the comments. And if you really like not having to write any of this code yourself, then you should totally check out this video right here. John with an H, our prompt engineer, sees just how far he can get building an application with the Superbase AI Assistant. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.